for over a year, we met intermittently with BP's counsel regarding case resolution. And we never got past square one, which was they would sit with us and say, you know, what's on the table, what's off the table, and every time what was on the table were the documents, were foundations or some other grander plan, and then, of course, the settlement of Eva's claim. And they never got past just wanting to discuss Eva's claim. And they kept raising the stakes up there intermittently, but would never put anything else on the table. So we never entertained any of it, and we never counteroffered. The counteroffer that we had with them always was, before you talk about her case, we have to get agreement on these two other matters. Those were the things that were in front for us, and we weren't prepared to discuss, nor would we discuss, the terms of her settlement until we reached disposition on the two things in front. And it didn't, BP's mentality didn't change about how to address that until within probably a week or two before trial. And I think at that juncture, when there were no more continuances, when everyone was down in Galveston, when our war wagon was down there and all our lawyers were there and we had, had two floors of a hotel all loaded up with all of our computers and all of our staff, and they knew we were going to trial, did they finally say, we got to do something? And at that juncture is when they first started making the overtures about let's talk about other things. And they agreed to at least a principle of de-designation of documents, and they agreed in principle to doing something grander. And so we really spent the last week or two before trial talking about what those options would entail. And as we got to trial, and this is after we actually had the jury in, we filled out the jury questionnaires, we know what a jury looks like, we have two more days of preparing for our opening arguments, and their lawyers were in town uh, as well as ours, and they wanted to meet with us one last time to make a big push towards discussing the details of a proposal, and that was done on the eve of trial, actually the night before trial. And so probably from 5 p.m., the day before trial until 4 a.m. the following morning, uh, we discussed the specifics of the parameters of the settlement. And they did the things that we wanted. One is they agreed to de-designation of documents. We agreed to a protocol for the de-designation of documents. It's okay to say we'll agree to de-designate, but if you don't have terms and conditions, it doesn't really mean anything. So we actually set up protocols. We agreed to the de-designation by the rules. We agreed to have attorneys for both firms go through that process. If there was disagreement on that, it would be resolved between myself and the general counsel of BP. If there was a third layer of disagreement, it would go to an arbiter. So we were very specific with that, and we reduced all this to writing from the time of the, of the principles of the settlement that morning at 4 or 5 a.m. until the time we were picking a jury at 10 a.m. Those were the foundations. We got very specific with the foundations. We still had arguing points over the amounts to be contributed. Uh, we had not reached an agreement on the amounts. And we worked those out over the course of the night. And they were at an amount and we were at an amount. And to some degree, there was a resolution to that by this matching fund, where we have there are 32 million in fixed guarantees. We have an ability to get another 6 million as a result of the matching fund program. So their total commitment can rise to 38 million. And those were really the final terms for the preconditions. And so we still had to talk about settling Eva's claim, something that we had never discussed with them in any detail. So we had done one, we had done two, and so we spent part of the night then talking about three and getting to closure there. And that was the last thing we resolved that morning.